All right, so today we're going to be talking about t-tests. So first of all, what is a t-test? The t-test first came about from a Guinness Brewery employee trying to devise a way to compare two batches of stout cheaply. He then published this work under the surname of student. So this test is only used when trying to compare the means or the averages between two and only two groups. We are determining if there is a significant difference between these two means. If they are significantly different, then we can reject the null. If they are different, but not significantly so, then we do not reject the null. We never accept the alternative hypothesis. We never accept the null. We just reject the null or fail to reject it. So which one am I going to use, the independent or the dependent t-test? When doing an independent t-test or a between subject t-test, we assume that all scores are independent of one another. In other words, each participant is only in one group. Either they are in group A or they are in group B, but they are never in both. For instance, when trying to compare the difference between how much males like movies and how much females like movies, participants are either male or female, but they are never categorized as both male and female. With the dependent or the within subject or the repeated measures t-test, we assume that all scores are dependent and are therefore correlated with one another. In other words, each participant is in both group A and group B. Again, this is also called a repeated measures or a within subject t-test because we make the participant do things more than once or repeat it. For instance, when trying to compare the difference between how much a chick flick is liked versus how much an action movie is liked, everyone rates both movies, assuming that they've seen both The Notebook and Die Hard. Keeping that in mind, let's go ahead and look at faster stats. All right, so let's go ahead and start with that first question. So do males and females have a significant difference in how much they like movies overall? Let's say that we ask 10 males and 10 females this question and ask them to rate it on a Likert scale of one to seven. This would be an independent samples t-test because participants are either male or they are female, but they don't get to rate in both categories. So we'll go to vassarstats.net and then we will click on t-tests and procedures. Then we will click on the two sample t-test for independent or correlated samples. And then under setup, we will choose the independent samples. Now, when it comes to data entry, there are two ways that you can enter in your data. You can either just enter it in manually one number at a time, or you can go ahead and just copy your data straight from Excel or SPSS or other programs that are similar to that, which is what I will do. So we'll go ahead and start with group A, which will be our males. We will just hit control C and control V. And then for group B, which will be our females, so control C, And control V and then we will click calculate. All right, so let's go ahead and look at those results. So we'll start with the data summary table. So the first thing we can do is go ahead and just double check that our N is correct. So your N will be the number of participants you have for each group. So we said we had 10 males in group A and 10 females in group B. So that looks good. We can also go ahead and check the means or the averages for each group. So on average, males are scoring a 4.5 and females are scoring a 4.9. We can calculate the degrees of freedom per group, which is going to be that n minus 1. So here n is 10, minus 1 is 9, and n is 10, minus 1 is 9. We can also go ahead and calculate the standard deviation for each group, which is going to be the square root of the sum of squares. So here that's 38.5 divided by that n minus 1, which we said was 9. All right, so the next table is the results table, which is right here. So this table will help us write up our results. So we have t, and in parentheses, our overall degrees of freedom, equals our t value, comma, p value. So again, that df is going to be the degrees of freedom total. So this is going to be your n minus 1 for group A plus your n minus 1 for group B. So that was 9 plus 9, which is 18, which is why our degrees of freedom in this table is 18. Then we'll go ahead and just record the t value. And then we will either record the one-tailed p value 
or the two-tailed p-value. In most cases we use two-tailed, but in some rare instances we do use one-tailed. If your p-value is less than 0.001, just write p less than 0.001. p can never truly be zero, so that's how we deal with that issue. If your p-value is greater than 0.001, go ahead and just report the exact value of p. So in this case, for two-tailed, p was 0.63. All right, so the next box is the F test for the significance of the difference between the variances of the two samples. We are going to just go ahead and assume that the variances are the same, so don't worry about it. And the T test, assuming that the sample variances are unequal. Again, we are assuming that they are equal, so don't worry about it. So the last table we have is the confidence intervals table. Now this table goes ahead and gives us the observed means for each group. So down here I have just the mean for group A or males. And then it gives us the confidence interval at the 95% confidence level and at the 99% confidence level. In most cases we use the 95, so we'll go ahead and stick with that one. And here it says that the 95% confidence interval is plus or minus 1.48. This means that our lower limit will be 4.5, that observed value, minus the 1.48, which will be 3.02. And our upper limit will be that observed value again, so 4.5, plus 1.48, which will be 5.98. And that is independent t-tests. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at that second question. So do people, in general, like action movies significantly more than they like chick flicks? In this case, people will be asked to rate both the chick flicks and the action thrillers, so they will be in both groups. That means that these samples are correlated because one person may just really hate movies and they will score all movies low regardless of the type of movie. So again, this will be a dependent samples t-test, so we'll start by going to vasterstats.net and then clicking on t-tests and procedures, then clicking on the two sample t-test for independent or correlated samples, and this time we will click on the correlated sample setup. Again, with your data entry, you can enter it by hand or you can just copy and paste it, which is what I will do. So we'll start with group A, which will be the scores reported for the chick flicks. And then group B, which will be the scores reported for the action thriller. Now, when it comes to importing this data, we want to make sure that the rows line up. So, this needs to be participant 1 that scored a 3 for sample A and a 6 for sample B. Participant 2 needed to be the one that scored a 4 for sample A and a 7 for sample B, so on and so forth. Once you've double checked that that is correct, go ahead and hit calculate. And then we will go ahead and take a look at our tables. So the first table is, of course, the data summary table. And again, we can begin by checking that the n equals the participants for each group. So since participants will be participating in both groups, the n value should be equal. So here it is 10, and here it is 10. If your n for a is 9 and your n for b is 10, then you're off by a line somewhere and you need to go double check that these are indeed correct. Then you can go ahead and take a look at your means. So on average, people were giving the chick flick a 2.7 and the action thriller a 5.2. You can calculate the degrees of freedom per group, which is still n minus 1, so that'll be 9 and 9. And you can calculate the standard deviation for each group, which will still be the square root of the sum of squares, which is 12.1 and 13.6, and then divide that by 9. So the next table we have is the results table, which is right below. And again, we will write this up in the same fashion. So it will be the t, the degrees of freedom, equals the t value and the p value. So the degrees of freedom here is the total degrees of freedom, but since each participant is measured twice, this will actually only be just the n minus 1. So that was 10 minus the 1, which is 9, which is why the degrees of freedom here is 9. Again, if your p value is less than 0 0.001, write p less than 0 0.001, which was the case here. And if it's greater, go ahead and write the exact value of that p.
The next two tables are not even applicable to dependent samples t-test because it talks about the variances of two samples and there's only one sample. So again, don't worry about those and we'll go ahead and just look at the confidence intervals, which is the last table. All right, so the confidence intervals, again, are going to be at the 95% and the 99% level, and they will be given for all of the means. So mean A was for the chick flick, and mean B was for the action thriller. So for the chick flick, the observed mean was 2.7, and the 95% confidence interval is plus or minus 0.83. This means that the lower limit is that observed value, so 2.7, minus the confidence interval, which is 0.83, which is 1.87. The upper limit is that 2.7 again, plus 0.83, and that'll be 3.53, and that'll be your dependent t-test.